like 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 that pair or um like that section said this is all based on known physics you know it's not invoking any kind of dark energy it's not invoking dark matter it's not invoking inflationary fields it's not just making stuff up to make things work um, this is all known plasma physics and he points out that oh by the way you know when you look out at the universe even though here on earth um, you know plasma is a rare thing actually fire is a form of plasma but you know we're used to uh, either solid liquid or gas the fourth state of matter plasma we're not really um, dealing with much of that in our day-to-day -day lives however when you look at the universe that's like 99 percent of the universe is plasma so if if you're demonstrating how uh, you can create galaxies that don't need dark matter and dark energy to hold them together without flying apart you've you've succeeded in you know you you've actually like you've simulated it you've made an accurate real world simulation um so that i found particularly compelling that that wow these guys are dealing with something that you know most of the universe is plasma and how it behaves here scales up to galactic levels and and so what we like they talk about pinching a lot and how stars form by pinching in these books um you would have to know a little bit about plasma and i do not to understand exactly the the technical details of that but essentially uh there, there's this technique called pinching in 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 plasma physics where you would basically make a star the same way like like by doing that you create this little ball of plasma that separates out and, and it's it's like oh that's how a star would form um and apparently the uh electromagnetic uh field or or force is is actually what's driving the universe like that force is way way more powerful than gravity yet and yet we base everything on gravity when we do our calculations and really uh, electromagnetic forces are considerably more powerful than gravity um like like one of their videos starts out with it's a trillion 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 times more powerful and you're like really like so all this you know it re really makes a lot of sense uh the plasma physics um what i've looked at and some of the websites i'm actually uh, a member of one of their uh forums but i don't I didn't really have time to once i got into it i didn't have time to do much posting on their forums but uh and get into many discussions i was researching other stuff but nonetheless this is kind of like something that's been on the back burner for me plasma cosmology and I, I i read read up on it when i get a chance and it's fascinating stuff i'll tell you what um i think these guys have you know part of the the big picture of how how the universe works whether or not you know the universe is uh you know things could be working by plasma physical laws plasma phys the laws of plasma physics i should say but that doesn't necessarily mean that his conjecture that uh, we're dealing with an eternal universe it may not be eternal uh, but you could still be working with plasma physics the laws of plasma physics to to work it all out um and uh so th things like that like However, it, uh, it all ends up turning out, you know, some of his speculation about uh, the nature of the universe, you know, being Euclidean, I'm, I'm you know, not going to argue with him on that, uh, presumably that that is true. But there are some questions when you get this on uh, this uh, eternal universe, then it then it's like, well, where did this disordered plasma come from for it and what's causing it to form order in the first place? Now, that could be, pra you know, properties of fractals, you know, maybe. Uh, maybe the same thing that causes snowflakes to to form maybe plasma naturally has a tendency to turn towards order for certain reasons or under certain conditions um, hard to say but uh, you know to be honest um, I recently I forgot who oh I think it was uh, Tom Van Flandern he wrote a book called uh, um, Dark Matter hidden planets and uh it's like three things and i've forgotten it already but he says in that book i'm sorry tom um i'm sorry i messed up your book hidden comets dark matter hidden comets and lost planet, planet x something like that 
Anyways, whatever the title of that book is, uh, it's on it's on my bookshelf. I can't see it from here. Um, he says in there, you know, he basically smashes the Big Bang, and uh, and then when he gets done smashing it, he says, you know, this whole thing with an expanding universe. Well, imagine the universe is like an ocean, right? And he said, imagine, you know, like when you look out on the ocean, you see waves. You know, there's just this chaos of waves. Well when you focus in on like a like a, a square if you could like make a grid of the whole thing you're viewing and, and focus on just one square uh that wave it it you know sometimes when you look out a, a like if you're on a cruise or something you look out on a boat you'll see the you'll see that you're kind of in this um it's like a, almost like a waterbed effect like uh the water rises and then falls and then rises and falls and it and it it's uh like you're on this tympanic membrane or something um, that rising and falling, he's like, we could be in an area of the universe and it could be falling. So it's so it appears that everything in our little region is expanding. But in reality, it's just this, you know, this ripple of the universe. And, and you know, in a billion years, it'll be going the opposite direction. And then in a billion years after that, it'll be going back again. And he's like, we have no idea of, no, you know, like this is the problem with um science can do replicatable experiments in our level of reality once you get to the microscopic level well now you're you know trying to work with beams of light and you can't you know you can't have tweezers and be down there doing things you know because it's it, tweezers are too big so on the microscopic level you're you're handicapped you don't have you know tools and hands that you can use to to do things and same with measuring measuring things on the galactic scale we're stuck we're, it's the opposite scenario you know we're not we're not big enough to say oh we can get an accurate view and measurement of, of various parts of the universe we can't we're stuck on our little speck over here in, in the milky way and we're trying to observe the rest of the universe with with what limited tools we have so so you know he brings up things like that he, you know that that in his book he brings up the fact that he basically says I, even though I'm smashing the Big Bang Theory, I don't have an answer. You know, it's too soon to really, um, you know, he's actually comfortable saying, I don't know. You know, nobody can know. Nobody can know how the universe began, how it's going to end. Nobody can know these things. Uh, and we're not really at a point where we can have decent conjecture on these types of things. So he's perfectly comfortable in just saying, I don't know. And it and here's what we do know and you know how it all fits together we'll figure out 100 200 years from now i like that i like somebody who's being straight with you uh anyways uh so um cosmos sapiens is an incredible book uh it uh goes through our main theories and uh the things that don't work it um it prevents all it presents alternative theories so even if the Big Bang cosmology is wrong. Well, here's uh, 15 other, uh, well, maybe only a dozen other uh, either modified versions of the Big Bang or uh, alternatives to the Big Bang. And he does the same thing for evolution, uh, gets into Darwinian evolution. And he's like, if, if, you know, here's the problems. Darwinian evolution has just as many problems as the Big Bang theory. And then he presents other, you know, theories that might be the answer. So he's still getting you there, but you know, getting you from, you know, the formation of the universe to humankind, he still shows that path of evolution, but he shows all the alternative paths. And that is, that, that's why this book is gold. It's, it's one of the, honestly, it's one of the best science books I have. I have like over, I want to say about 150 science books. And, and this is in my like top three. It, it, it is incredible. It just has everything you want, brief summarizations of every single alternative. Th well, almost every single th alternative theory. I actually, uh, that's one of my subjects of interest. And uh, I have a few books on some alternative theories that are not present in this book. But nonetheless, uh, you have to have this book. Like if you want to know anything about science and alternative, because like people can pick apart, e you know, easy targets to pick apart. Anybody who's into science you're going to run into somebody who can easily pick apart Darwinian theory, neo-Darwinian theory, easily pick apart the Big Bang theory. And 
if you can't say, well, what about this theory? You know, that's that's how you need to handle those debates. Because then the other person is going to say, you know, frequently what they do is say, well, I can trash your theory. And they don't know anything about these alternative theories. And, they, and you know, like you get creationists arguing like, well, then God did it. You know, if the Big Bang Theory is wrong, then God did it. If Darwinian theory is wrong, then God did it. Well, we don't we don't ever learn about the alternative theories. So it's like if you can toss that back over in their lap and say, hey, what about these theories? You know, like because I'm... Uh, Although I am, I am, uh, I actually, I don't want to make it sound like I'm anti-religious, but I, I definitely harbor uh, a grudge against um, these, this six-day creation. God just did everything. You know, like you can just invoke God for everything. And it's like, that's really not a good argument in my opinion. I think that's kind of a cop-out just to, just to always say, oh, the Bible says this, and so that's that. You know, it's like, whatever. Um Anyways, check out the book Cosmo Sapiens. Uh, you can also look up Tom Van Flanders' uh, uh, Dark Matter, um, Something Comments, and Hidden Planets book. Um, I'll I will put in the uh, comment section the right name of that book or in the description or something because uh, I screwed that up. But anyways, check out the books; they're great. And uh, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. <laughs>